for hanging out and being with us. Um, my name is Christina Furlong. Um, I founded an organization called Make Queen Safer uh, around 2013. Um, it happened because I live in the neighborhood of Jackson Heights, Queens, and on the neighborhood listserv one night, I was told that it was the third time a child was killed in traffic within a mile of Northern Boulevard. Um, my friend, my new friend, um, said we had to do something. We started a march, and that started the evolution of this process that brought me here um, from being an advocate to becoming a social journalist. Um, uh, one of the reasons that um, Make Queen Safer was so important to me was because um, we have a lot of injuries and a lot of traffic death in New York City, and it's been underreported, and it, the bias in the reporting is um, very frustrating. So, for example, in Queens so far this year, we've had 15,000 um, collisions that have resulted in injuries and 69 deaths in the borough of Queens alone. And on the far side, you'll see that um, citywide, uh, there, people who are getting killed in traffic and getting injured in traffic, the, the drivers who hurt them are not being prosecuted. For 5,966 injuries, there are only 38 prosecutions. We have problems. Um, my goal is, is broad. It's uh, to redefine um, the way we report these stories of traffic violence. And um, what it takes is a change in culture, first and foremost, and a change in policy. And in order to do that, you have to create involvement, open dialogue and participation, focus on the culture of reckless driving, build partnerships, and tell those underreported stories. It's similar to me, um, like Chalkbeat does for education, Tree Hugger does for sustainability, and my new favorite website is The Trace, which is a nonprofit um, journalist endeavor on gun violence in America. So one of the reasons is, um, my, my evolution here is bookmarked by the hit and run death of Luis Bravo up top um, in 2013. And last week, um, again in my neighborhood, in a place that I visited three times, uh, um, Ovidio Jaramillo, who was killed by a hit and run driver. And um, neither of these drivers have come forward. If they were to come forward, they probably won't be prosecuted because nobody saw it. Um, so from a journalistic perspective, uh, you have to be able to tell this story in a way that's going to create impact and be compelling to people. Some of the things that I've um, focused on the most is news literacy. Um, and news literacy to me means like what we, how we're processing what we're hearing. Like if we hear a car jumps a curb and ran over somebody, it's this automatic thing that happened. Or if we hear that somebody was involved in an accident, then um, we're, not, we're gonna think that somebody did something um, th that caused this accident, that it was um, not preventable. But often there are reasons that um, these things are preventable and it's not reported that way. When it's not reported that way, people don't think that way. Um, the top one we were able, with Julia's help, noticed a nice tweet from the New York Times saying um, a driver, uh, let's see, the bottom there, a car, car crashes into trick-or-treaters. And um, we tweeted to this New York Times reporter and said, you should really say the driver did it. And he changed it. Um, uh, there's a hashtag called crash not accident, which also tries to change reporting. Um, the New York Times has taken it up and now says crash not accident, as well as the NYPD. Um, verification in real time reporting is another important issue in journalism. And the bottom uh, Twitter. Uh, Daily News article reported the death of Allison Liao, who was killed in Flushing, Queens, saying that she broke away from her grandmother's hand and ran out into traffic. And that was not the case. That's not what happened. The driver drove right into alley. There was video that wasn't even shown in the initial testimony. So we have, um, we have to correct that as journalists. Um, then you have to have a social media presence. And another thing that's really important to me are the tools of civic tech. Um, getting people involved, being able to report a story, being able to use mapping and data to um, make that real to people. So from an advocate, I kind of became an engagement editor and a <laughs> um, social media journalist. Let's see. So um, there are goals for interaction and reporting. We need to spotlight the extent of the problem. Um, it's very helpful if you use mapping to geolocate crash sites. 
um, and to report. It's under reported topic. You need to report on the issues that are happening. In the bottom, um, when Mayor de Blasio was elected, we created a media event by going to that inauguration and saying Vision Zero starts today. It wasn't necessarily advocacy, it was saying don't forget this little lobby here. Um, <coughs> we have to amplify the stories also by saying um, in the bottom here there's just a collection of newspaper headlines that say someone was killed and there were no charges filed by our district attorneys. And you could Google search that and see over and over and over again we have problems. So my channels for engagement, um, let's see, these are the, the physical ones that I basically went out and um, embedded myself in my community, got to know people, and um, made some connections. Uh, let's see, two youth bike rides, three town hall meetings, four meetings with elected officials, a coalition of six community groups, three traffic safety press conferences, six neighborhood outreach tours, and the World Day of Remembrance for Traffic Violence. And I'm sure there's more than that. But um, yeah, that was kept me busy. Uh, on social media, I grew, um, I have a, a, a main focus on social media on Facebook and Twitter. I have uh, 860 members, 691 followers on Twitter. We um, started a bunch of hashtags on Instagram. That, um, so I, I'm also like uh, aggregating those hashtags for the event, the next event that will happen to say that this has been a problem that we've been documenting for a long time, like hit and run drivers, um, illegally parked cars, all the different issues around it so that there's a source that you can go back to. Um, in working in social media, I, I come from the borough of Queens. It, um, we're different <laughs> than everywhere else. Uh, it's a very ethnically diverse place. There's a lot of like um, class differences throughout the whole borough and to connect people is really hard. And one of the things that I did, and I did facing the advocacy of greater New York City, Manhattan, was um, tweet in Chinese and in Spanish and highlight the articles that were written based on our events. And it was also wonderful and informative to see that those event, the coverage in the ethnic media is a lot different than what it is in the New York press. Um, so as far as metrics go, I'm on the impact model of making change a uh, change in culture and um, behaviors and things. This is the impact model of the Gates Foundation, which talks about first you raise awareness, you change behaviors, you get your um, idea understood within social norms, and then you can change policy and government and things. That's what I've been working on. Um, one of the ways I did it um, was doing surveys. I did a community survey for myself to see who these people were and what they wanted to hear about in my community. It was interesting. Like 60% of them were, um, had advanced degrees beyond a master's degree and the age demographic was like 30 to 50 and they read a lot of news. I asked them what kind of news they wanted to read um, and they wanted to read um, more about policy than say, did something happen in my neighborhood? And out of the com base community of advocates. I say my community is made up of advocates, victims of traffic violence, um, elected officials and city agency people, and then um, my big focus is on school children and the school um, communities. So um, then I followed that up later with a school survey which asked about the school safety conditions around schools. I started writing articles about schools. I wrote about when um, traffic safety was in the news uh, I wrote about um, how I think Vision Zero is failing school children, how I believe that the tenets of Vision Zero should be included in the Department of Education, which is something I push for. I used maps. Um, I brought maps with me to elected officials. I used maps in all my posts and my articles, and I said, this is what, this is what we're looking at. You can see it this way. This is your corner. There it is. Um, and then uh, along the lines of things being underreported, I. Uh, we made a, we made a, Julia <laughs> made a beautiful map of the school children in 2014 who were injured or killed in one year. I'm way behind. This is something that I created. It, um, everybody said it couldn't be done. It's a map of crossing guard locations in New York City. I went to city council last week for a hearing. They're trying to pass two laws on crossing guards. They're, one of them is to have an advisory council. The other one is to have a map and NYD, um, NYPD to disclose the locations and geolocate them so people can use them. I got this after nine months of trying to get this data 
um, following my local precinct around. So I'm very proud of this and look forward to seeing it. Um, let's see, I had a lot of forums. I did a lot of partnerships. Um, I broke them out. You can see academic, cultural, and advocacy. I made inroads with a lot of different groups and have found out how to join communities and coalitions. So um, let's see. It's very important to stay current if you're going to be in social media. You have to be able to respond to things as they happen. You have to show up places. You have to make sure you're writing constantly and getting the word out. Um, you can't treat all the platforms the same. People are reading them for different reasons. You can't lapse and you can't battle. Um, let's see. I believe that uh, the approach needs to be tailored for different platforms. And you have to be able to link the um, advocacy between different mediums. I looked at my Twitter, which was pretty successful, I think, and I noticed that most of the people who were looking at my tweets were going back to my profile. I said, oh, I better fix my profile on the link that it's going to. OK. Um, uh, the greatest impact I feel that I've had thus far is that we have managed to make Vision Zero a priority um, in the eyes of City Hall in Queens. The mayor came to Queens to announce Vision Zero. He came back two other times in different locations. And we're going to make sure that it's reported. And also, um, let's see, the changes in reporting are happening, too. So let's see. I guess we can skip that. That's it. Thank you very much.